Shalom, everyone. This is Ty Green. I want to share a brief reminder as we look at potential conflicts like the Russia-Ukraine, China-Taiwan, or even there in the Middle East, as we expect some developments there as well involving Israel. There is an expectation of a strike, a flattening out of some sort. It appears to happen on one continent in particular, and the people there do not recover until after the upcoming collapse. Their calamity endures until the new world government is set up. This fist pounding within the illustration of this video is in regards to the root word of this quote unquote wound that is descriptive of whatever this event is. And this connects us to Revelation chapter 13. By definition, we don't know in what form this event takes place. Nonetheless, we must be aware of it as the Bible points to this time period for that event to occur. So let's get into this. Let's go first into the Strong's Concordance and look at this Greek word in its root form, pleso. It's number G4141. And we see the definition here. Through the idea of flattening out. To pound. Figuratively, to inflict with calamity smite the Thayer lexicon says to strike smite so during this time we need to compare scripture with observation right don't forget that the first part of revelation chapter 13 is a clear indication that subsequent events will happen when Apostle John saw the beast rise up out of the sea in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, it has a wounded head. This infers that the wound occurs before the beast rises up out of the sea. Therefore, we can expect that after this wounding event, the beast will rise sometime after. This means that the time will span from the wounded head event into the time that the beast rises up out of the sea. Then after the beast rises up out of the sea, there will be a recovery from the incident. Thus, the deadly wound is healed. Now, this occurs before the Antichrist rises within this same beast system. And the Antichrist also experiences an event in which he is healed of a deadly wound. Two separate events. One foreshadows the other. It's a precursor to what happens to the son of perdition, the Antichrist, after he reaches full power and becomes the beast personified. Take a look at Revelation 13, verse 12, really quick. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. This is in reference to the false prophet. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. What we're looking at now is the precursor that happens during the transition into the collapse that happens before the new world government rises, before the Antichrist is revealed. It's a huge heads up of what's coming next. For those that are not aware of this, here's what's going on. Since God warned the world through the Revelation 12 sign of the new world government rising in Revelation 12 verse 3, we know from that date forward to expect a collapse that paves the way for this new world government to rise up. And it's been in development this whole time. This is the same kingdom that is described as a beast 
the fourth beast of Daniel 7:23. So we already know that these represents groups of people. So when we get to Revelation 13 verse 1, Apostle John sees this beast rising up out of the sea. The sea, this body of water, represents a group of people. Revelation 17 verse 15 describes those waters as peoples. The horns of the beast are also people. We see this in Revelation 17 verse 12 when the kings are described. The seven heads are identified as mountains in Revelation 17 verse 9. These are land masses that very well may be the seven continents of the earth on which people live. So now look at what happens to them. Whatever it is may have an element of violence. We don't know. As we define the word wound relative to this beast, we see the connection to violence, a mortal wound, and simply death. Strong's Concordance G4969. We see this definition, to butcher, to slaughter, to maim, violently, kill, slay, wound. The Thayer lexicon follows up and says to slay, slaughter, butcher, to put to death by violence, mortally wounded. And the third one leaves it open to even a non-violent death. We must keep this in mind. When we look at the word wound in this same verse, we're pulling this from Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, when Apostle John says this, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now, this is before the Antichrist is revealed. He's not revealed in this sequence until verse 5. So what we're looking at, this word wound, there's two words here. One is wound and one is wounded. The Strong's Concordance definitions to define this word is very important. When we look at this word wound, Strong's Concordance G4127, we see this, a stroke by implication, a wound, figuratively a calamity, plague, stripe, wound, wounded. Take a note at the root word G4141 that we reviewed at the beginning of this video. Remember, through the idea of flattening out, to pound, to inflict with calamity, smite. Their lexicon follows up with a blow, stripe, a wound, a public calamity. By definition, that's an event causing great and often sudden damage or distress, a disaster. We also see heavy affliction, something that causes pain or suffering by definition. And lastly, we see plague, a contagious bacterial disease by definition. This is why we cannot say for sure what type of event represents the deadly wound for that mass of people. When we look at that word plague, we can connect that to what we've been going through the last few years with pestilences. It could be a reference to an impact of a variant that concentrated heavily in this one particular area on the globe, with the end result being loss of life. Whatever this event is will impact lots of people and seems to involve many folk dying. The other definitions may refer to a military conflict, but there's indications by definition of a sudden event. This may connect to the pillars of smoke that we see in Joel chapter two. We don't know. Keep watching how this develops. Whatever this wounding event is will precede the collapse. Now, why is watching any of this important at all? These particular biblical prophecies are warnings that we're heading into these times of judgments upon the earth. It's a prompt for repentance and an encouragement 
to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. The hereafter moments that Apostle John was shown are indeed real. And the only delivery from this is through salvation in Jesus Christ. All right, I will leave it right here. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.